Hello everybody, Pokepeel here, and welcome to another Mod Spotlight. Holy shit, we're doing one. So guys, before we get on with this Mod Spotlight, remember to hit that uh, like button. It helps me out, and I would really appreciate it. Plus, it shows your love, so uh, that would be really appreciated if you could do that. And uh, yes, yeah, so... Today, we are looking at a mod called Evilcraft. It's uh, quite evil, and it adds a load of cool new stuff to Minecraft, including this, the uh, environmental accumulator, but we will get to that in a little bit. Not quite yet. First, I want to go down into the new Pokétech Labs, and uh, we will head on into the mod testing area and we will start our spotlight. So this mod is still a work in progress, but I think it's way over the point of work in progress anymore. Um, it's pretty much a fleshed out mod and uh, it is made by a guy called Croza. So I would check him out. I hope I said that name right as well, because uh, if I didn't, oh, shut me lord. But anyway, uh, the first thing you are going to want to get in this mod is going to be some of this Dark Ore. Um, this spawns between level 6 and level 66. So, um, as you can see, level 6 and level 66. Uh, yeah, 666. But uh, basically, you are going to want to mine this. You can mine it with a iron pickaxe and above mining level. So, uh, you can get that and you can get a random number of uh, dark gems from it. Uh, you will also have the chance of getting some crushed dark gems, but that is slightly rarer spawn. But uh, yeah, you can get... Uh, what did I get? I got two of those and I got five, so I got about two from one and three from the other. So there's a random drop amount from those. But uh, if you have other mods like uh, Industrial Craft, Rail Craft or Thermal Expansion uh, or Mechanism even I think, um, then you can get this, the Crushed Dark Gem by just simply putting this in one of the Crusher type machines. So what can you do with these things like the Dark Gem and the Crushed Dark Gem? Well the Crushed Dark Gem we'll get to a little later. But as for the usual uh, dark gem, then you can craft it into some different things. One of which is this obscure glass. Uh, now, obscure glass is pretty cool in the fact of it costs eight glass and one dark gem. It will give you eight back. And once you oh shoot, and once you have the obscure glass, you can put it down. It uh, has a connected texture, which is pretty nice. And basically what it does is if we just do this with it and then we cover it up. Basically it is glass that is fully see-through, it's not darkened out or anything, but no light can travel through it. So it is pretty cool in that aspect. So you can create mob spawners and stuff with this and uh, I think it could be pretty handy and useful to have. And it's pretty cheap as well, it's not overly expensive, which is good. So you can make mob spawners pretty early on in the game, I would say. The next thing that you can craft with the dark gem is the dark block. Now this will be used later on in the mod, but if you have 9 dark gems, you put them in a crafting table and you will get yourself a dark block. The next thing you can create is a spike, or several spikes actually. Uh, if you put a dark gem on top of an iron ingot, you will get 16 spikes. These can be crafted into various things, which we will get on in later on in the mod spotlight. But one of the first things you are going to want is going to be this blood extractor. So a blood extractor, as I said, uh, spikes we will get later on. Now is later already, so uh, for this you will need one of your dark gems. You will also need some glass, any type, you can even use the obscure glass if you really want to. And you need three spikes on top, and this will give you a blood extractor. Now, it says hold shift for info, so uh, hold in inventory when slaying mobs and it will fill this up. Uh, shift right and right click to extract or auto supply. Now this can hold 5,000 miller buckets, which is about five buckets worth of blood. Now blood is going to be your basic main resource in this mod. So let's head over to the mob testing area. I have some sound mufflers here so we don't hear all these freaking piggies going oinky oink. 
and uh, basically as it said hold this in your inventory while killing mobs and it will gradually fill up you will have to kill quite a few um, when going through this though so as you can see my blood is filling up I've already got a miller bucket and uh, yes yeah, so if you keep killing mobs they will die and you will get more blood from it as you can see there is also these ghosts uh, haunting the place these will spawn after you have killed any type of mob and they will stay around for only a short while and then they will vanish so pretty much the first thing you are really going to want to get really to get started with this mod or at least know what you're doing uh, you're going to want to get a darkened apple which uh, I, wo I wouldn't eat this maybe feed it to some animal uh, basically this is crafted with an apple and one dark gem and it will give you the darkened apple you are also going to want a book and if you feed as it says one of these to a animal the animal will then start dying once the animal is dead throw a book down and you will get one of these the origins of darkness this is basically your helpful guide on uh, how each thing works within this mod it will show you all the recipes and the different things that you can get so that is how you get the origin of darkness now we are going to move on to the different mobs that spawn within this mod so this mod spawns three different types of mob into the game there well technically it's four um, one is this lovely villager who will trade oh my god 17 blocks for one uh, box of eternal closure but it is empty empty ones are good uh, but we will get to these things later on this is basically the villager for this mod now there is one thing you want to be wary and I don't know if we'll be able to get it straight away but on certain nights I believe full moon nights then this villager will turn into a werewolf and you want to be careful because those things really do hurt there we go, holy shit, that actually fripped me a bit. So uh, you will get this lovely werewolf fellow. Um, you may want to kill him or he will of course eat your brains and probably your bones. And uh, once you kill it, you have a chance of dropping a few different items. There is the werewolf bone, which can then be crafted into bone meal. It will give you 15 bone meals, so slightly better than a skeleton, but of course this thing has more hearts than a skeleton. So it wants to be. And this thing is freaking huge. Hello, mister. Somehow his clothes still fit. I don't know how that works. Uh, he may also drop werewolf fur, which can be then crafted into five leather, which is pretty good also. And then there is the werewolf flesh. We are, of course, going to change the night so it's not a full moon and you don't attack us, mister. So, as you will see, at the night time, uh, this werewolf flesh will glow. And it also has a uh, pink name, meaning that it is special. If you eat this at night time, you will get werewolf abilities. So, you'll get night vision for four minutes and it will be night vision free. You'll get speed free for four minutes. You'll get strength free for four minutes. And you'll get jump boost free for four minutes. So, uh, I would say that is pretty cool. Unfortunately, your vision is a little bit more clouded than usual. I presume that is because I'm near bedrock level. Yeah, I presume so. So I think that is pretty cool abilities. And uh, that would mean that you would actually want to kill one of these guys. But unfortunately, this fellow, um, I think only one spawn per village. So uh, you are going to want to be careful if you do try and kill the werewolf. Because you may lose your lovely werewolf friend. But I would be wary if you are going about eating this werewolf flesh during the daytime, then you are going to get poisoned. It is going to last for around 10 seconds and it will be poisoned too and you will lose most of your health. So do not eat werewolf flesh during the day. Another thing you can also get is humanoid flesh, which I believe you get from uh, killing different players on a server. And you can also eat this. I'm not sure if this... Where you get the achievement cannibal, but it doesn't really do anything. So another mob that this mod adds is the poisonous libel. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this thing is so freaking annoying. These things spawn near rivers and uh, they can basically, they just fly in an awkward pattern and they will poison you. Uh, once you kill one of these fellows though, you will get uh, 
a poison sack and this poison sack can be made into numerous different things, one being the poison bucket. To make the poison bucket, you will either need uh, poison sacks or poisonous potatoes. Uh, you then will need a bucket of water and an empty bucket. And uh, yeah, that will give you the poison bucket. Of course, this will act like normal poison once you dump it down on the floor and it will probably kill everybody around you. So you could technically make a poisonous moat and drop your friends in it on a server. That's very nice. Once you have your poisonous bucket, you can then craft it into poisonous potatoes. So you can create po uh, potatoes out of the uh, bucket. You can just put a normal potato with a poisonous bucket, you will get a poisonous one. If you put the poisonous bucket with a book, you will get poison tip one, which will poison your foes once you strike them with a sword. The next thing you can get is a potion of poison that is made by one poison bucket and one glass bottle. The last mob that we are going to cover, there is actually one more and uh, I won't cover that until a little bit later, but the next mob we're going to cover is the nether fish. Now these buggers are found in the nether and they are so annoying when they spawn. Much like silverfish, these are uh, spawning through blocks, so be careful when you're mining. The different blocks you can find them in are basically netherrack, uh, we have soul sand, and you also have nether brick. So careful when mining those fortresses, because you may get pushed off by one of these fellas and fall in the lava. But no, like silverfish, once one block breaks, and um, basically all blocks around the fish will also break, and they will all go for you. Nibbly nibbles. So now you have your blood, you can start crafting the various other items within this mod. You can also make tanks in this mod to help store your blood. As you can see here, we have different layers, um, one which does not have any. You can extract these and you can also make bigger tanks. So the tank is made with two dark gems, one glass of any type, and two iron ingots. These tanks can then be upgraded by putting other tanks, same sort, um, into a crafting grid, and then you can up the capacity size to an even bigger tank. I believe it goes to probably something like four million? I can't remember precisely. So let's grab these three tanks out of here. We got a crafting table here. If we stick one in, you will see it can hold 16 buckets, or 16,000 miller buckets. If we put two in, you can get 32,000. If you put three in, you can get 48,000. And as I say, I believe this goes up to the millions. But don't worry, these tanks don't just hold blood, they can also hold any other liquid in Minecraft. Including mod support, uh, so basically liquids from such things as Buildcraft, Mine Factory Reloaded, and other mods like that. So I think these tanks are pretty cool, they are pretty easy to make, and they are pretty expandable, I guess, because you can increase the inventory space pretty easy. So once you have your blood, you are going to want to do various things with it. As I have already said, you can store it in one of these tanks, but if you right click with this on the ground, you can also put the blood down and it will put it into there. Now, as you can see, you can pick this up again by right clicking. So hardened blood will uh, gradually become hardened, I guess, if you leave blood in a area for a long time. To make this back into blood, you either needed to be out in the rain or you will need to break it. And what we are going to want to do at the moment is simply to break it. I don't know if this will work, but if we put in a dark gem, it will suck up the blood that is there. We need at least five blocks worth of blood. It will suck that up and it will give you a dark power gem. As you can see here, the tooltip says throw a dark gem in the middle of a pool with at least five non-hardened blood blocks or infuse a dark gem with blood. Now we'll get to infusion in a minute. But of course if you have a silk touch pickaxe or you can pick up the hardened blood then you will be able to get this and you will be able to put it into a furnace. Or the other way which is even more simpler, get a flint and steel, set it on fire and you will get eight of these hardened blood shards. Now blood shards are basically what you are going to want to get the blood infuser which is your I would say primary machine in this mod. 
So once you have your eight hardened blood shards and you have your dark power gem, you are going to be able to craft a blood infusion core. Now this is going to be what you need for most of your machines and that is crafted as I say by putting eight hardened blood shards around a dark power gem. Once you have done that you can put eight cobblestone around the blood infusion core and you'll get the blood infuser. Now as I've already mentioned the blood infuser is your main machine that you are going to want in this mod. This crafts most of the items you are going to need. So what are you going to want to do once you have your blood infuser? Well, you can do one of two things. You can, of course, put your blood tank in here and drain out any blood, but you're going to want to put your blood in. So if you have blood in a tank, you can pick your tank up and you can place it in here. It will drain all the blood out of the tank and into the filter inside the blood infuser. Another thing you could do is by putting your blood extractor in here when you've got some blood in it and that will also filter it into this thing. This holds only 10,000 millibuckets but that is more than enough for a blood infuser. Of course another way of doing things is you can extract it by putting your blood extractor into here. It will put take all of the blood out and put it into your extractor. But of course we're going to want it into this machine so we're going to extract that. So one of the first things I'm going to show you for infusion is going to be a dead bush. If you can get your hands on a dead bush, you will be able to infuse the dead bush with about 2000 millibuckets of blood into a undead sapling. So let's do that now. We can stick that in there. It will slowly process up much like a normal furnace. Only thing is instead of using coal, we're using blood, which of course is the evil side of this mod. And then you will get your undead sapling, which we will now go to the biodome to show you this. So once you have your undead sapling, you are going to want to plant it like any other sapling. And you can either bone meal this or just wait for it to grow. Once it is grown, it will turn into this, the undead tree. Of course, you can see here we've got blood drops, which will drop to the ground. And uh, yeah, pretty much this tree bleeds. But the main thing that you are going to want from this tree is, of course, going to be the undead logs. Now don't worry about the corners of this tree, These are this is from another mod called uh, Better Foliage. Um, it will not look like this, it will just look like a normal square tree. So you will see here, this is what it looks like normally without Better Foliage. So just a normal Minecraft tree, but still pretty cool. And I don't think the leaves will drop either. Uh, but this thing does bleed, so that's still pretty cool. You can of course then chop this down and you will get its logs you may also get another sapling and you can of course shear the leaves to get the undead leaves undead logs then act like normal uh, logs which you can craft into other things you can also craft into planks so like so and i will show you these slightly orange and bloody i guess but uh, still pretty cool and I can see how these would be nicely aesthetic. Of course the planks act like anything uh, wooden planks would normally do. So uh, you would be able to get sticks and different things like normal. Another thing you can do, as I've said before already, you'll want to put in your dark gem and you'll get your dark power gem out. This will only use about 250 millibuckets of blood. There are other things that you can also have, but you will require baubles for a couple of these mods. So you've got the effortless ring, which will allow you to move faster and more efficiently. But unfortunately, I don't have baubles installed right now, so I won't be able to wear this. But you would put that on in your ring slot in the baubles UI. To make this a lovely fellow, you will want uh, the promise of velocity and the promise of productivity. You will also want two iron ingots and two gold. Now to get these uh, promises, then you are first going to want to get yourself a filled bowl of empty promises. To get this, you are going to want two crushed dark gems. You are also going to want a bowl of empty promises. This will not be used up in your crafting, so that is pretty good. Uh, but to get one of those, you're going to want three pa dark power gems, and then you can craft yourself your bowl. You can then get your first tier of filled bowl of empty promises. 
With this, you are then going to want to put it in your blood infuser with around 5,000 millibuckets of blood, so quite a lot, and you will get the Bowl of Promises Strength Zero. With the Bowl of Promises Strength Zero, you are then going to be able to craft Promise of Tenacity 1. To get the Promise of Tenacity 1, you're going to want your Bowl of Promises. You're going to want a Spider's Eye, and you're going to want one of these, an Iron Promise Acceptor. To get this, you are going to want to put 10,000 millibuckets of blood in your infuser, put a block of iron in, and you will get this Iron Promise Acceptor. This will give you the Tenacity 1. So once you have your Promise of Tenacity, you're going to want to go into your infuser and put this in. This will then expand a slot down here for whatever other uh, promises you want to put in. Of course, now you have your Promise of Tenacity 1 in, you can craft even more within the Blood Infuser, such as the Bowl of Promises Strength 1. One. So instead of strength zero, you'll get strength one. This will, of course, uh, increase the size of the inventory in here. So if we take that out, you can see our blood's higher, but it will increase the amount of blood you can put in. So instead of having 10,000, we now have four times that, and we have 40,000 blood. So that is what Tenacity does, it expands the storage of blood in each machine. Now once you have this, as I've said, you can then craft yourself a Bowl of Promises Strength 1. This you will need 5,000 blood, you will need a uh, filled bowl of empty promises, and you'll want your promise of Tenacity 1. Of course you can get a Strength 2 and a Strength 3. For the Strength 2 you will need the Promise of Tenacity 2, the same amount of blood, um, you'll want the filled bowl of empty promises and you'll get the two. And for the three, you'll want the promise of tenacity three within your blood infuser. You'll want the same again and basically everything's the same, you'll just need the higher tier of promise. So it can be pretty expensive to get these different things. But once you have Tenacity 1, of course you can get Tenacity 2. You'll need a Strength 2 or a Strength 3 Bowl of Promises. You'll need an Ender Pearl and a Gold Promise Acceptor for the Tenacity 2. The Gold Promise Acceptor is 40,000 blood, which is holy crap, a lot. Uh, you will also need a Block of Gold, and that will give you your Gold Promise Acceptor. For the Promise of Tenacity 3, you will need a Strength 2 or a Strength 3 Bowl of Promise. You will then also need a Eye of Ender and a Diamond Promise Acceptor. The Diamond Promise Acceptor, you will need a Promise Tenacity 2 in your infuser. You will also need 1600,000 millibuckets of blood in here, so that is a no way are you ever going to get that. That is just massively... Blah. That would be horrible to get, but there is a way of automating blood, so I will show you that in a bit. But you are also going to want a block of diamond, and you will get your diamond promise acceptor. But that still doesn't explain how we get the other two. So the promise of velocity, you will need the gold, the diamond, or the iron. You will need a strength one, two, or three bowl of promises and you will need a block of redstone you can then get the promise of velocity this will uh, speed up machines by two and it will also work in the blood infuser the spirit furnace and the spirit reanimator which we'll get to those two later on for the promise of productivity you'll need either the iron the gold or the diamond promise acceptor You'll need a strength 1, 2, 3 of the Bowl of Promises, and you'll need a Lapis Block, and that will give you the Promise of Velocity and the Promise of Productivity. Of course, we can only hold one of these uh, Tenacities in at once, so if we put the Diamond in, we can no longer put the uh, Iron one in. The Diamond one will hold 6,400,000 mm millibuckets of blood, so that is just over the top man, Jesus. But you can also put in uh, the promise of velocity and the promise of productivity. You of course can put several of these in, you can put up to four, and then if you want to you can put another four in at the last slot. This will just make the uh, whole 
crafting stuff so much quicker so you'll get efficiency so uh, the productivity one gives machine blood efficiency of times 1.5 per one of these so I've just grabbed one of the dark tanks here if we plop this on top it will drain out the blood or it should at least there we go so if you right click on this thing then you can stop it from putting stuff in the block below or you can right click on it and then it will allow things to travel downwards if we grab ourselves 64 coal then we can use this blood then uh, if we stick this in then as you can see the speed is productive and it will use less blood per thing but if we take all of these out then it will go a lot slower and we've got 66 uh, 300 we've got eh, slightly less so so the promise of productivity does make it more efficient and the uh, promise of velocity does make it a lot quicker so there we go we can see we got more faster and if we stick another one in it's just massively fast so you can either have speed or you can have efficiency or you can have both so once you've infused your coal with blood you will get blood waxed coal this basically doubles your coal's efficiency, so instead of lasting for 8 smelts, it will last for 16 smelts in a normal regular furnace. Another thing you can craft is this doll dust. For doll dust, you'll want 2 gunpowder and 7 sugar. This will give you 4 doll dust and quite boring dust, or is it? The dull dust thing can be put into the infuser with 500 blood and a tenacity 2 and you will get yourself some redstone, which is, I would say, pretty cool. Another thing you can craft with the blood infusion core is the blood chest. This will also hold 10,000 uh, millibuckets of blood, but to get this you're going to want 8 planks around the blood infusion core instead of cobblestone like the uh, blood infuser was. This block acts much the same in the fact of it holds blood, but it is completely different apart from that. Let's say you had a item that was damaged. If you have blood in here, you can simply stick in the item and it will fix it. Slowly, but still pretty quick. And uh, then it will fix it. There is a slight chance that it will give it a cursed enchant which will not work well for you, but of course there is a way of fixing this. To fix it, you are going to want to get yourself a purifier. It disenchants your items, so for this you are going to want one of your dark blocks, which I showed you earlier, four dark gems, one blood infusion core, and two hardened blood shards. You can then place this down and either put a tank on top of it to drain in the blood or you can simply right click with the needle like I showed you before. Or if you have a mod like Thermal Dynamics or even Buildcraft Pipes, you can of course filter the blood in that way. So if you do have a cursed item, you can simply have blood in here, put your cursed item in and it will disenchant it. Another thing you can do with this is uh, you can disenchant items, which is pretty cool. So let's say you have a golden pickaxe with efficiency 5, but of course a golden pickaxe is useless. It's basically the rate of wood. So what you are going to want to do is get yourself a block, not a book, a block. So to get a block, you are going to want the promise of tenacity one in your blood infuser. You're going to want 500 blood and you're going to want a book inside your infuser. This will give you your block. Once you have your lovely block, you are going to want to put your item inside of the purifier and then you're going to want to right click the purifier with the book you have. It will then slowly disenchant it into the book. The book will turn into a enchanted book. Right click to get your item back. Shift right click to get your enchanted book. And you will have an enchanted book with the enchant from your pickaxe. This will not destroy your pickaxe and it will just give you your enchant so you can use it on other things which is pretty cool. But I'm afraid guys, I'm going to have to end the first part of this mod spotlight here. So I hope you enjoyed, remember to hit the like button if you did, and remember to subscribe and uh, to keep up to date and look out for the second part of this mod spotlight. 
So I hope you enjoyed what you've seen so far. I will, of course, be continuing this pretty soon. And, uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed. I have been Poke Peel. This has been the Pokitech Labs. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!